What's up, gang? We've got a special guest today, the tech lead of the KeyFi project. Let's have some fun and talk about this project with the expert. gang is Carlton Flowers your crypto pro back with the promised video interview with my good friend who just happens to be the tech lead and co-founder of the key five project we've got Ben Gervais are you related to Ricky Gervais by the way I meant to ask you that um true story my uncle's name is Ricky Gervais <laughs> <laughs> not not even joking. He's not not that Ricky Gervais, but his name is Ricky Gervais. Oh man, no, that's <laughs> hilarious. You could do a lot with that. So tell everybody <laughs> where you live. Um, so I'm up in Canada, um, by the uh, beautiful Rocky Mountains. Uh, it's pretty cold these days, but it uh, we had a nice day today. Went up to about zero degrees Celsius. So pretty happy okay. about that. Yeah, a nice day at zero degrees, and I have the nerve to complain about it. it's been like uh, five ten degrees in Missouri and tons of snow, but. You can have that. I want no parts <laughs> of it, but I'm glad that there's people who could hold it down up in Canada. By the way, you know, I can sing the Canada national anthem pretty good. Oh, Canada, our home, our native land. Look at that. I even got a salute. Was that legit? That was legit, wasn't it? <laughs> that was the bomb. I'm a good singer, I must admit. Oh, by the way. <laughs> This is my other studio turbo is a project that I made. It's like one of my businesses and I can't figure out how to change the background to crypto pro. So I thought I'd leave this up here because it's nice. It's pretty. So just keep that in mind. I am still the crypto pro, even though the studio turbo sign is up there. So, all right, Ben, tell everybody about your technical background that got you involved in the crypto. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically, um, I guess, I mean, I've been coding since I was a kid. Um, I made my first website, you know, when I was 10 or 11 or something. Um, <laughs> Good grief. You know, when, they, when the internet came out, right? Um, yeah, the internet uh, didn't like, exist uh, when I was 10. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> um, you know, and then I learned how to program in like, uh, you know, a few different languages, like early on, like, uh, like basic and uh, like Turbo Pascal when I was in middle school. Um, then, um, yeah, uh, I took a, an interest in doing a bit of design. Um, so, wow. yeah, I started, you know, messing around in like uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. And actually, uh, if you remember Macromedia, there's okay. Macromedia yeah. Fireworks. That was like my tool of choice at one yeah. point for doing these like sliced image websites and stuff okay. like yeah. back in like the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, but finally got it like started getting really, uh, so I guess like started like doing like professional, like technical work um, since about 2008 where I started working on uh, um, e-learning projects. So like learning management systems, okay. um, specifically for like, uh, like worker safety stuff. And then, um, oh, wow, that's cool. That was interesting. Um, and then, yeah, I, I spent a fair bit of time in China. Uh, I worked in like a business development for some um, like manufacturing companies there. Um, and yeah, then um, I did a small fundraise uh, while I was there for a, a social media um, app around the travel um, industry. Wow. And that was around actually around 2013. Okay. Um, and that was when I first found out about Bitcoin um, wow. when it did the little pump to a thousand there, uh -huh. um, you know, 2013, 2014, <laughs> right? 1, um, <laughs> and it, it was, um, it was amazing. So uh, I had, um, I'd never been exposed to like, like the, the candlestick charts before and like uh -huh. day trading and, you know, okay, I just bought some and then it went up and whoa, I just a <laughs> hundred bucks, <laughs> right? you know, in like a minute, like, you know, that blew my mind. Right. Um, uh -huh. But then I, it, you know, it crashed and I was like, oh, okay, it's over. Um, so I went and worked <laughs> on this, uh, this travel it's startup, um, you know, and um, that didn't, didn't pan out. That was my first shot at a startup, um, you know, by myself, right? So um, that, uh, well, actually, I um, can't say by myself. I did have some, uh, some uh, friends that were working with me on that. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and long story short, it didn't pan out. And then, uh, but I did join another startup in, uh, in Thailand. We were working on a, uh, a chat uh, chat app for wow. like um, 
uh, it's a, it was a premium messaging app that uh -huh. did microtransactions for social media influencers. Oh, man. Yeah. And that, that one did work still. So wow. that, that one actually is still out there now. Um, and it's, uh, it's doing well. I mean, it does. Can you tell us the name of that one? Yeah. I'm curious. I actually can't. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that the, the, um, the, the company I worked for was called the parlay. Uh -huh. Um, but like the actual branding of this stuff, um, it's due to some, yeah, legal things. I can't say exactly the, the brand names, but I'll give you a hint. It's like an OnlyFans type of thing. Huh. Wow. Okay. So, That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> hey, bust, yeah. bust some Chinese for him real quick. Give us a couple sentences in Chinese. Wow. Okay. <laughs> right on, man. I, I'm with you 100%. Whatever you just said. <laughs> That's a difficult language, though, isn't it? Um, took about 18 months to sort of get my head around it. Oh, you know? man. Well, I'm impressed because I've been trying to learn Spanish for about 20, 30 years. <laughs> you know but i do a bomb mexican accent and also puerto rican so nice. good that i can make people think that i'm hispanic <laughs> so but anyway um tell us about this KeyFi and DeFi. Tell people, well, what the heck is DeFi? I've got a lot of new people and family members that are just learning about crypto. So from a technical standpoint, watered down, we're both engineers. We have a similar background, me and Ben, actually. Um, we're both engineers. I deal in industry and I actually do a lot of OSHA safety stuff too. And I'm an, I'm an environmental civil engineer. And so sometimes it's hard for us to explain, but apparently you can explain things where normal folks can understand. So how would you explain <laughs> DeFi? What is DeFi? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so DeFi is a shortened acronym for decentralized finance, okay. right? Um, maybe a simpler, more understandable term would be open finance. Huh. Um, so in the sense that this is kind of open to everyone. Okay. Um, you know, if I go to a bank, let's say, right, um, uh -huh. and I go to apply for a credit card, I will get rejected because, okay. you know, the bank doesn't trust my credentials. I don't have, you know, enough paperwork or something. Right. And this is a problem, not just for like, you know, I have a weird case, you know, you know, living in Asia and working in crypto. Right. But, um, you know, uh, there are tons of people around the world that don't have access to like, uh, like banking. Basically, okay. Right. Um, so this is basically a tool that could help these people. Um, now, the other thing is that it's able to do things that traditional finance is not able to do. Um, I mean, there are some really interesting things um, that you could do, like uh, there's, you know, collateralized debt positions uh -huh. uh, or CDPs like MakerDAO. Right. Um, collateralized are, debt positions. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's kind of like the analogy I always use is that it's like a pawn shop. You oh. take a, a block of gold okay. to a pawn shop. He's going to give you some cash, uh -huh. and then you got to go pay the cash back with some interest. He'll give you the gold back. Okay. Now, in that in that I time, that. your gold could the value of your gold could appreciate or ah. depreciate. Okay. Right? Okay. Um. So the same thing with your crypto. Let's say I take you know ten ether, right, uh -huh. and I put it into a smart contract. Right. And I can take out uh, you know a thousand die or something, right? Uh -huh. Um. And then the value of that ether could increase. Uh -huh. And then I could borrow more die uh -huh. and borrow more die, kind of like my credit limit is uh -huh. going up. Okay. Uh, and tell them what know, die uh, is. Tell the newbies what die is and how it's spelled. Die D A I. Okay. Uh, so basically, that is, um, I guess it's, a, it's an algorithmic stable coin. Uh -huh. uh, what a stable coin is, is um, uh, it's a cryptocurrency that's pegged one to one to the US dollar. Okay. Uh, the most famous one is obviously uh, USDT or Tether. Right. Um, but they're very different. Uh, Tether operates with, you know, a treasury uh -huh. uh, and it's centralized, right. whereas Dai operates uh, using an algorithm and smart contracts. Wow. Um, I so they knew just the a same little bit about but that, different. but that's a good way to explain the difference between Dai and Tether. Yeah. And Tether is uh, like USDC, the USDC coin. 
Is it more? Yeah, similar? so that's another one. Um, USDC is a little more, I guess, regulator friendly. Okay, <laughs> okay. We're the U.S. government that wants to keep us under wraps and not let us play out here in the wonderful world of crypto like <laughs> everybody else in the world. They're doing very mean things to us, ratcheting down our options. It's very terrible. Very, very terrible. Not good. Very awful. Now, tell everybody what your project that you're involved in has to do with DeFi and what the name is. Absolutely. Yeah. So the uh, project that I'm working on right now is called KeyFi. Okay. Um, KeyFi. Yep. And basically, it is, uh, it is an app that integrates with multiple DeFi platforms. Okay. Um, so... Right now, we're integrated with six different DeFi platforms on the Ethereum network. Okay. Um, so that's Compound, Aave, Uniswap, One Inch, Curve, and Didex. Uh -huh. um, and uh, we have a, a focus on data. Um, okay. So the the sort of like the first view or the first like um, like data table that we release is called the Rebalancer, and basically. Oh. It's very simple. It just shows you um, different assets and different platforms and what the interest rates are oh, um, so wow. that you can always find what is the top uh, top interest rate um, uh -huh. for these assets that you have. And maybe based on those interest rate changes, you might want to change uh, assets or change platforms, uh -huh. uh, rebalance your portfolio, diversify your stablecoin holdings. Okay. Like that. So how would a person benefit from this and how do they get involved in this DeFi stuff with the key fi project like i'm yeah, interested absolutely. i'm already familiar with the self key product and so i want to get involved in this key fi so i can make some money so how would i go about doing that sure so um basically you can uh hook up a wallet uh, uh -huh. so one of your um ethereum wallets which would be metamask uh, the self key wallet, as you mentioned. Yeah, or, and I have um, the self key wallet on my phone, and also MetaMask. I've got that on my phone and the computer. Yeah, um, so that's all you need to get started. Uh -huh. um, so you go and you connect the wallet, uh, and then you can see what balances that you have in there, uh, and then you can interact with the different platforms. So uh, rather than having you know six tabs open at once um, to all these different places, you just have it all in one in one place. So, uh -huh. so if you have staking or yield farming and several different cryptos you can monitor all of that with KeyFi. is that basically yeah. now um we're not trying to connect with everything there's mm -hmm. already some other platforms that you know i mean they they're doing every little little thing uh we're sticking <clears throat> to the major ones uh -huh. um that's sort of that's our, our strategy there we want to get sort of the 80 20 uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Pareto principle, yes. uh, which is sort of the, the 80 20 there, right? So we're doing the 80 uh -huh. most, uh, 80% that is the most effective, right. I guess. Yeah. The 20% yeah. that covers 80. So, yeah, like yeah. that. So, yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, name a couple of staking cryptos that I would say start with so that I could use the KeyFi product. Like, what sure. are so, a couple examples? Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's really focused heavily on stable coins. Okay. Um, so, and the reason for this is that uh, a lot of people who are getting into crypto, um, or rather, maybe a, a better way to say this, there are a lot of people who are hesitant to enter into crypto due to the volatility. Uh huh. Right? Prices um, going up and down rapidly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, even I, even I get a little. Uh, you know, right. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I mean it's it's. I mean today was another one of those days. Yeah, right? it was. I mean, uh, today was wild. God, uh, I'm I, I use Kraken right, and it uh, Ethereum flash crashed down to seven hundred today. Whoa. Yeah, and I didn't like know that's about that. freaky. Yeah, so wow. I mean like and yeah, pity the souls who are leveraged on those positions. No, that's um, terrible. <laughs> that's scary. Yeah, yeah, not a good um, deal. But, uh, so, I mean, that's the sort of thing that's very off-putting. Right. Uh, say, like, um, you know, I've got a cousin who lives a bit further north, and, um, you know, he's got, like, three kids. Uh, you know, he's been working 20 years at the phone company, right? Like, uh -huh. he's not trying to bet the house, you know. Yeah, on, and like, risk some all his coin, money. Right, like, right. right. But uh, stable coins, uh, uh, they offer, you know, stability, right? Right. Uh, the, you get like, a dollar like, worth, right? it's always a dollar. It doesn't go up or down. Yeah. Well, it does go up, though, and it goes up a lot more than what your normal bank would do, right? Okay. Uh, because, yeah, if you're looking at a, a regular bank, 
um, and you're putting it in a high interest. Oh, savings for account. the interest, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. right. Um, you know, look at what, like one percent a year, maybe. Like, you if know? you're lucky. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, a lot of these crypto lending platforms, I mean, they're offering like pretty stable, like five, ten, sometimes fifteen, twenty percent. Now, mind you, they they work on uh, a variable interest rate. Okay. Uh, now, um. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll try not to get too crazy with this, but basically how, how these work is that um, it's based on the supply. So right. the available supply of an asset, uh -huh. if, that, uh, if the supply becomes low, then the interest rate becomes high right. to incentivize people to deposit more of that type of asset. To cover that, um, right. That makes yeah. sense. So, so after people deposit more, then the interest rate goes down and maybe another one goes up, right? So you have these different stable coins on different platforms at different rates, and they're all kind of like going up and down based okay. on what we call the utilization rate. Okay. So let's say I wanted to pick USDT Tether. So I would get some Tether, maybe $100 worth of Tether, and then I would stake it to get these percentage rates, the yield back with the nice APRs that are better than the bank. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And yeah. so I would use, say, if I had some Tether and some DAI and some USDC, and then the KeyFi site would show me and monitor what's happening. Is that how that works? Yeah. Exactly, okay. right? So let's say um, you've got those three, right? Um, yeah. USDC, USDT, and some DAI. Uh -huh. uh, let's say you've got, uh, you know, $500 of each of those in okay. Aave and 500 of each of those in Compound, right? Okay. Um, and then you're, you can see those. Um, you can see uh, your net APY on there. Um, so each of those assets and each uh, is going to have a different interest rate. Okay. And so you can see your, your combined interest rate on that. Okay. So my USDT would be paired with Aave, and then another stable coin would be paired with another crypto. Is that how it works, where it's paired with something well, that like, is... They're not, no, they're not paired. That's different. When, when they're paired, that's um, going in a liquidity pool, Okay. Uh, where you have two assets going at the same time. Right. Or in the case of like Balancer, for example, you could have multiple assets. But uh, no, in this case, it's a single asset deposit, okay. right? Um, so you're, yeah, you, could, you could do it multiple times, uh -huh. um, and then you'd get that sort of net APY. Right. Those, so I would just uh, be putting assets. it into Tether and then staking that Tether to get the percentage APY. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, now explain to me what is the KeyFi token, or when is this happening, or when does it come to be, and what does it have to do with all this? I understand the website, and I've seen it, and it makes pretty good sense. It's a slick website. So, what what about the token? Can you tell me about the token? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, I think before we go into the token, it will make a lot more sense if we explain where KeyFi came from. Okay, yeah, yeah, do that, um, do that. <clears throat> so, um, With the whistle. Um, so, I guess for, for the past three years or so, uh, I've been working with uh, SelfKey uh, on their project. Right. Um, so initially, I came in to work with the uh, the wallet development team, uh -huh. uh, and then uh, started working on uh, product engineering uh, right. and did a, a prototype for a browser extension called Login with SelfKey. Uh -huh. um, and then. Uh, since I started doing demos for that project to different other like uh, crypto projects and exchanges, um, I sort of joined the uh, the business development team for a while. Okay, I'm uh, we calling my position the uh, biz dev ops. Wow, um, like kind of like a tech ops, like biz dev um, kind of role still. Um, so yeah, um, you know, continue sort of like uh, you know talk to. Uh, other crypto projects, learn about like, you know, what their pain points are, and mm -hmm. ways that we can help them, right. uh, specifically around identity, because the Selfie project is uh, is all about de decentralized identity. Right. Um, that's that's the core focus, self-sovereign identity. Um, so this is this involves a um, piece of technology like uh, DIDs or decentralized identifiers, okay. which is kind of, kind of like your your ID that's like a, a universal ID that you can always tie back to yourself. And, uh -huh. uh, and then there's a, some, another concept called verifiable credentials or, okay. or claims. Uh, uh, we're basically, um, you know, for example, I can say I am over 18, uh -huh. right? Or I'm over 21. Right. That would be a claim, right? And then I could attach that claim. Uh, somebody else could certify it uh, and say like, you know, I could go to a, 
um, we use this more for like uh, like passports or document uh, um, verification, like a notary. Uh -huh. uh, could verify that claim, and then we could issue that claim on the blockchain. Um, you know, sign it with the signature, um, and also have a, a signed credential object, um, like as a file. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, basically all, that would uh, work together as sort of like a proof that you know I can show you this is my proof that I am over eighteen. Wow. Right? Okay. Or whatever thing that you're trying to prove correct right yeah, yeah that makes sense using the blockchain to do what we did in the past with paper documents i know i've got my passport here somewhere and with the blockchain we can now say notarize things into this immutable record so that takes the idea of being a notary to the next level to the next technological level is that a good way to to describe yeah that? okay yeah, the, the immutable ledger, that's definitely an important part of it, um, because uh, we've had the um, like public key, private key, um, sort of like signing mechanisms for a while now, right. but the issue is always um, like, a, like a, what do you call it, like certificate authority kind of management, right? Uh -huh. um, you'd have to have like a certificate authority in a centralized place, but now that's um, that can be decentralized. Okay. Um, so there, there are some benefits there. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So, okay. So, so um, yeah, back, back to the point here. So, where where does that, how does that lead to Keepa, right? So, um, the past two years at Selfie, or I guess, yeah, two years, year and a half, two years. So, um, I've been working in the research and development department. Okay. Um, so, this is uh, looking very forward thinking at things. Um, we had some other uh, identity related things like uh, proof of identity. Okay. Like, how, how, how do you prove that you're a human, um, you know, in a decentralized way? Um, you know, like to prevent like bot spam, stuff like that. Right. Um, yeah. Other, yeah. Other things. Um, and then um, we're also looking at token economics. We okay. did uh, like an eight month project on token economics, basically, uh -huh. uh, you know, researching different, uh, different things, uh, different ways to do this. Um, and we're looking at how could we solve some problems around selfie? Because one of the things that we want to do around decentralized identity was create these, um, these credentials that had uh, token backing to them, right? So you could stake on your, your credential, credential right so you say yeah, yeah i am ben these, these are the facts about me uh -huh. um and i'm going to put my money down that says that these are true right right um and then that ties into an arbitration and reputation system okay where basically you could uh someone else could challenge me and say yeah no i don't believe you uh right money if you're if i'm right and you're wrong uh -huh. right and then that would go to a panel and this is where we would explore things like game theory uh like wow. a shelling game for example where you have people um like an arbitration panel who is doing voting uh but they don't know each other um so there are incentives to make sure that they are honest about um you know what they're doing right uh, so you know incentives and uh, disincentralization there um so that's kind of like the the broad sort of like goals for selfie um, uh -huh. in decentralized identity is to create these you know fully decentralized self-sovereign identity platform um you know using you know all this really you know creative interesting new technology that's been sort of enabled by um, by blockchain and um then uh you know give that to people you know? right <laughs> and like get, okay. let them use it right decentralized um, identity Wow. Well, I've learned a lot here because uh, I had no idea that this is what KeyFi is about. So now I'm starting to get that. And it's well, that's interesting. Self -key, and I, self key, right? Okay, yeah. that's self key. Right. But, uh, a decentralized so, um, identity. Yeah. And now you're going to so tie that into the next step, which is. Which is KeyFi. KeyFi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so um, last year. Um, <clears throat> DeFi started really picking up steam. Right. Um, I, I, like, I don't know, 18 months ago, it was at like zero almost, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's at like 30 billion. That's insane. $30 billion <laughs> locked up. Now, what does it mean when they say $30 billion is locked up into DeFi? That means people have put assets worth that much money into smart contracts. Okay. And they're like, yep, we trust this platform. Uh-huh. We like the services that this platform is giving me. Uh -huh. I'm put my money there, and it'll stay there. It stays locked. And it'll there. stay there. Yeah, that's pretty exactly. cool. Yeah. Okay. So that was starting to pick up steam. So we're like, hey, let's take a look at this. How does decentralized finance tie into decentralized identity? You know, are there any sort of dovetails there, right? Um, 
So, yeah, we had some ideas, right? You know, there's um, what if, uh, you know, I told you about the uh, collateralized uh, loans, right? Uh -huh. What if you could do an under collateralized loan with, um, you know, using identity um, on a DeFi platform, uh -huh. like that, right? Um, and then what if we wanted to restrict um you know access to specific functions um based on an identity credential uh -huh. and that's what uh that's one of the showcases of what the keypi platform is doing right is that we've uh, we've added a, a credentials layer on top of our staking platform uh -huh. um, so basically in order to access the keypi staking platform you have to have a uh, one of the self key powered uh we call it DeFi um, eligibility credential uh -huh. right so it's a it's a credential that's a uh, issue to you um you know, it's uh, it's uh, secured by a blockchain, basically. So you know, there's a ledger there uh, that links back to it, um, and yeah, it allows you access after you go through uh, through a verification. So, um, so I mean, this was it. It's uh, it's a it's a pilot project. You know, um, not really anyone else doing that. Um, but you know, the applications, like I said, like if you look at the long term uh, picture there, um, they're very very useful stuff. Right. Wow. Now, let's talk about volume. Before we started the video, we were talking about how the volume was very, very small. And in fact, that's one thing I was blabbering about in my complainer video before I started to learn about what this is all about. So why don't you tell everybody what that volume difference is since my last video and what's going on right now? Right, right. so uh, a few days ago, um, we dropped an announcement that um, uh, SelfKey and KeyFi together with, with Binance right. um, are doing a long-term airdrop. Um, so uh, key token holders uh -huh. on Binance.com, right. the main Binance, um, uh, are going to get airdropped uh, key tokens and KeyFi tokens, um, you know, according to, there's, there's some uh, technical sort of things, like according to a series of snapshots. Right. Uh, you can read the details, uh, Binance.com, um, you know, look at the Yeah, we had to post there. it in my group, as a matter of fact. Well, someone had posted it to me because I didn't even know it was there. And one of my group members that came over from one of the previous groups had posted it and said, hey, check this out. And I was like, whoa. So anyway, um what's going on with the volume now since the news of this second airdrop announcement yeah so um we got a little bump in interest wow you know? um yeah it was cool that's uh, positive so i mean yeah our, our telegram got uh and, and you know it's interesting because this is sec second air second time he keep eyes done an airdrop we did right. another airdrop uh, on christmas uh, -huh. uh or i guess it was christmas eve or so okay and um uh, yeah, it didn't really go over that well. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of contention. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for whatever reason, I mean, like, you know, a few things didn't line up. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, it it, it, uh, it went poorly. Yeah. Um, you know, but, um, you know, we sort of, like, buckled down. Um, we cleaned up the website. Right. You know, got a new, got a new design. Um, you know, cleaned up, some, cleaned up the app uh -huh. a bit. Um, you know, added some more integrations. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the... Uh, and we're, we're actually, um, we're almost finished a, a, a totally new redesign of the app. That Man, that's so, so cool. Um, that's so cool. I can't so wait really to see to get that. that to come out. Just so yeah. everybody else knows, this is one of my favorite ever crypto projects that I had ever discovered just because the app was something that I was super excited to use because I'm like, I have use for this thing because I want to store my driver's license and my passport and pictures of my debit cards for my business. I wanted to store it in a secure way on my phone. I was like, wow, I have use for this. And so that's what first drew me in. And it's interesting. I've learned so much now because I'll admit that even in December during the first airdrop, I was completely ignorant of what was going on or what it was all about. And I also didn't understand what KeyFi had to do with SelfKey or how there was even this connection between DeFi and what we have with, what did you call it? Uh, decentralized identity. Was that the fancy word? I love that yeah. word. I'm going to start <laughs> using that. I like that. So I want to get involved with the KeyFi part so I can learn. Not just to say get rich. I mean, that'd be great for me because I'm only in crypto for the money. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit it. That's why I'm here. Okay, I need the cash. The kids need shoes. But I want to learn. And actually, Jordan Williams, who's watching this, my nephew, he is monkeying around with his first 
Ethereum project. He is writing code. He was watching a video and he's making his first project. And so I'm super excited about Jordan learning with me about KeyFi because I think we can get some valuable experience with this. And so for me, since I'm in the U.S., which is a bummer, I had to go ahead and set up another Binance account, which I had my old one until they ran us off of it. But I set up a VPN and set up a Binance account and I'm moving my uh, stuff over to there because I want the airdrop, dude. <laughs> Until the U.S. gets their head out of their rear end, I'm going to have to play behind a VPN. And I would not suggest that for other people. That's an advanced tactic, an advanced move. But I want the ability to get involved in some of the projects that we're not involved with yet because of the government regulation, the strictness of what they're allowing us to do here in the U.S. Where we used to be on the cutting edge of everything, now we're behind the world, which is kind of sad. So, well, you know, it's never too late to turn that ship around. The, the U.S. has an amazing history of like, uh, you know, technological development. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in the 20th century, yeah. right? So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's too late for them to, you know, um, you know, double double back down on innovation, yeah, uh, and technology, and uh, you know, come up with some groundbreaking stuff again, right? right. And uh, you know. Uh, let the bureaucracy get out of the way. No you know? kidding. No <laughs> kidding. We need bureaucracy out of the picture. And it's such a huge stumbling block right now where we're going to lose our ability to be on that cutting edge and have that leadership position in the world with crypto, which is the future of the way we store and exchange value in the whole wide world. And it's the future of finance. I think in five years, we're going to be saying, hey, remember when there was a bank on every street corner? I think the <laughs> banks are going to look like phone booths. That's what I was telling my kids today. I said, you will be talking about this in five to 10 years, about the days of banks, because I think DeFi is going to completely threaten to wipe out the bank market unless they get on the bandwagon and start to offer these ways an on-ramp that's easier to get into crypto DeFi because we don't want to save our money in the bank and get that half percent a year and in some situations it's no percent per year and if we get into say an inflationary state i can't remember if it's an inflation or deflationary state where we go to negative interest rates so that means there'll be no incentive for us to put money in a bank so our only choice is decentralized finance yeah, so nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the airdrop happens on the 28th of February. The first snapshot. The now, first snapshot. If you missed the, okay. you miss the first snapshot, that's fine. Uh -huh. You can still qualify the airdrop. There's five snapshots okay. um, that take place, right? And it's an average amount. So as long as the average amount uh -huh. from all of your snapshots meets the threshold, you're good. So and what is the if threshold? It's, if it's, it's it's March 1st, and you're like, oh man, yeah. You know, I'm just seeing this now. Yeah, that's fine. It's not too late still. OK, um, you can get in there. Just make sure you hit the next uh, the next snapshot uh -huh. um, and make sure it's in your in your spot wallet. Don't have it in open trades or anything like that. Okay, right? it's got to right. be in your spot wallet during during the airdrop period. OK, and um, spot again, if you look on the announcement, they're very clear about, you know, okay. the times and amounts and everything. OK, um, so go ahead and read that. up on that. OK, yeah. and what is the threshold? Oh, gee, I don't have it up on on uh, my screen here. I mean, it's go, not, go look at the uh, go look at the announcement. Hopefully, it's not like uh, five it's, million. It's, uh, no, no, no. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> Hopefully, the little guys can jump in and get their little key fire drop on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a much better understanding, and uh, this was a great discussion. I guess we'll wrap it up here, but that's not the last that we're going to hear from Ben because. He's going to be coming back so we can talk about whether or not, and my last two videos, Ben, that I just posted today, we're talking about the market correction and whether or not we're going to get a quick bounce back up or if this is the beginning of a deeper correction. We were talking the other day and we're wondering how extended this market is of how long we can continue to go without a significant correction. So... We're going to discuss that. And then we got a few other topics. I'll be having him back 
time the time because he has wealth of knowledge. And thank you very much, Ben, for coming on and educating me. I have such a better idea of how this works. And even while you were explaining, I'm probably going to have 10 or 15 more questions. So we might have to have <laughs> part two. <laughs> so thanks, uh, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Ben. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And then also, I'm going to be popping into one of his broadcasts pretty soon that we're going to have. And I'll put a link for everybody in the Telegram group and on my own uh, YouTube channel. So that's about all I have. This is Carlton Flowers, your crypto pro. And we'll see you next time. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.